Ming here. So it's been a while. <laughs> We've got a lot of, uh, it's a, I've been doing a lot of back-end work uh, for uh, FX and um, uh, prepping for the short film that we've been shooting and we've got one more scene left to do and it's a longer scene and I'm trying to secure a location so that's what's taking longer. Uh, today I'm going to do just a smorgasbord of things here or a smorgasbord. I don't know how you would pronounce that actually. A few things that I uh, have come across that I would like to pass on to you. We're going to concentrate a little bit today on how you retain uh, someone in focus when they're moving. Uh, this is taken from some of the tricks that we use uh, for filming dynamic scenes between two people fighting and that sort of thing. Uh, and so that the person who is also having to adjust to their movement back and forth side to side keeps them in frame and keeps them focused. First thing you'll notice is the depth of field blur. I love the, there's a big distinction between uh, what I do for my um, day job, so to speak, which is the, the core JKD training and teaching uh, self-defense. We do a lot of filming uh, with these lenses and that particular one is the, should be the 20. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Panasonic 20 millimeter. So uh, that one's nice and sharp, as you can tell, and uh, it's very different than the SLR Magic. The SLR Magic is a nice lens. It's a heavy lens. Um, however, uh, it's a 2.1, which is great. It is soft. It's softer than what I prefer. Now, some people like that for filming. I like crisp clarity, and I will add softness later in post if I need to. And it's a beast and it's got, uh, you know, what you need for the prime lens. Uh, but it is softer and I don't care for that. So I won't use that as much. Uh, for the self-defense training, I like clarity because uh, that's a visual spectrum where um, people need to see details. When you're focusing on something, it is so nice to have one particular area in focus. So the thing that we come across in filming the self-defense is uh, we have two dynamic bodies usually. If I'm just describing a technique and things like that, I can be really uh, in one position and not change that much compared to my distance to the lens. So I'll, I'll shoot frequently at 1.7 or I'll go up to 2, uh, maybe 2.1 on the aperture. The reason that is is because then they have a little bit more of a play. So when we use the, and this is how we judge it, um, and this is for the person who's shooting, they have to be able to see where this is and where it starts getting out of focus. And Are you we're gonna switch this out to a 2.1 and you'll see what that's like. Okay, now we've set it up to 2.1 on the aperture. So you can see the difference between what was in focus before and what was not. And this is really important when we're filming things that require uh, action. If we set it up at 2.1, I know, or 2, 2.1, I know about where I need to be. If I go too high on that, then uh, we start including too much of the background and it's harder to uh, retain focus on what's going on in the foreground. And so what we do is we, we peg the person right here in the center. If it's two people, meaning somebody at a slight angle because we're looking for the hitting the thirds, meaning one up here at the top and one at the bottom or that sort of thing. Uh, what we'll do is if I, my focus or I know that I'm going to be moving, I generally will have the camera will focus right to the middle. And especially if we're on a 2.1 or, or a little higher, uh, what will happen is I'll be able to uh, move within that and I'll be fairly in focus, but the, the focus point is sharp, razor sharp. Uh, and that allows the person who's filming a bit of leeway in their movement as well, because if I'm sitting here, uh, she can go back and forth, up and down, change angles a little bit and still have enough in there in frame and in focus uh, where it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, meaning she's not 
held to just a plumb bob rotation around me. She has to stay in one particular thing if we raise her sharp uh, focus that, but if we open that up aperture a bit more, uh, we've got more play. So the depth of field uh, for focus now uh, gives her a bit more room to play. And so for the self-defense filming like that, for movement and action in the scene, we ramp the um, uh, aperture up 2.1 um, we'll, uh, in that range. And that's where the SLR magic uh, starts playing. But again, it becomes too soft for what I generally like uh, to do. So now when we go back to the sharp focus, we're gonna go and pull that into place. She's gonna drop it to a 1.7 again. So if we're at 1.7 here, okay, that's really sharp. So you'll see that uh, it becomes less so. I don't get that as much play. So she ramps it up, let's do, uh, do three. Okay. Now we realize we're changing the exposure a little bit here, so just bear with us. About how sharp is that? Is that showing it's up not. sharp? It's not? What have we got? There's where it starts to turn around. Okay, so what do we hear? Perfect. Perfect. So nothing. we start losing. There's where it starts to come back. Right there, okay. Yes. So go up to 4.5 or 4.6. Okay, so we're gonna run this a tad. This is really okay. sharp. Yep. Okay, there. so tell me where Stops we're losing. There. Right about there. And there, when it starts to fade out. Okay, so we've got this distance between here to here. So that means from here to here, right about here, you're looking at from this distance to here. That's the field that she can move. So we're looking at that. So she can move to and fro the target and still have a fairly good focus that allows her more leeway. When we drop it back down to 1.7, we're looking here, sharp. And you tell me when it starts losing. There is where it's gone. Okay, you start losing. Gone there. Right there. So we're looking at about here. So you can see it's almost half uh, of what we had before. And that means she's tied to the scene a bit more. So uh, the shooter in this has to then have one eye on, the, on what's in frame. And usually what we'll do is we'll set focus and the person that's usually tallest or that needs to be in the scene will get the top of the frame just slightly above that and then drop it to maybe the elbow or maybe the hip. And so the person who's actually filming, if they're using just the screen for that, can then move. And as long as they keep the elbow and the hip or and the top of the head in that um, frame, filling the frame, then they'll be in focus. So that's how we do it. Close-up shots and things like that or full body shots, it's the same scenario. We will lock focus at whatever we need to fill the frame and then the person who is filming just keeps those as reference points, whether it's the top of the head or the feet, things like that. So those are reference points that allow them to stay in focus as they move. And sometimes we'll be doing moving shots. And as long as she fills that frame within that, we'll, we'll be nice and sharp. And it's a nice little dynamic uh, that has to stay there. And what we do then is we just cut and then we change focus and we'll repeat the move and from a different angle and things like that. So it looks continuous. And uh, that's a little bit of the, the tricks on how we do that. They can do it two different ways. One is to do that where they fill the frame with whatever is needed and then they retain that wherever they happen to be going, however they happen to move. And the other is if they've got a good eye for distance, they can just see by looking on the periphery where they are in relationship to the other person. So you get a, you judge the distance about, you know, um, say it's five feet. You keep that five feet measure as you move. So some people will do that. Uh, that's also something that you can do in the back of your mind when you're filling the frame. You lock focus on, uh, say, hip to head. Uh, 
then you also at that same time that you're filling that in frame, and again I don't like to cut off the head so we keep a little bit above the head, uh, but you fill that part of the frame and then you take a peripheral shot and you take a look you know, with your eyes, you kind of judge about how far that is so that uh, as things really get moving and things go crazy, you're still able to use those two reference points, one that periphery, if you've, if you've got that, it takes a little bit of skill. Uh, and some people have it just like that, uh, or you just fill the frame with what you need. And then we reshoot at different angles uh, with a refocus on the lens. So that's a little tip uh, for how we shoot and maintain focus on moving targets for uh, dynamic scenes.